Episode one, Shooters Touch podcast. Can be diving in deep. And to start it all off, Kyrie Irving, as always. No matter what's going on, Kyrie Irving's always the headlines. Why not start off with Kyrie Irving to the Dallas Mavericks to go play with Luka Goat, Luka Magic, the boy. Dom, initial thoughts on this trade. My first thought is Luke, or uh, I'm sorry, Kyrie Irving made it about two and a half months without being a problem. Yeah. And I thought he might take that momentum all the way with him until the end of the season. Because if he does that, then he goes into free agency. Yeah. And maybe, maybe someone is crazy enough to take their chances and give him a four-year max deal in spite of the disaster that's been the Brooklyn Nets Kyrie Irving era. But then, out of nowhere... He puts in a trade request, and not only puts in a trade request, but then has a, a phantom calf injury and doesn't play, and then reports come out that, like, maybe he'll just sit out the entire rest of the season if he doesn't play, and all of a sudden, the next day, he's gone, traded to Dallas. Like, it was it was a wild turn of events, Yeah, um, which can't be surprising when we've seen what's happened with Kyrie Irving. Pretty much starting the day he demanded the trade out of Cleveland. And that's that he he does things on a whim. 100%. And he can change a franchise like that. Um, and the Mavs are taking a hell of a gamble tying, you know, locking up assets into Kyrie Irving. Obviously, his contract expires at the end of the season, but they gave up, you know, a decent amount to get him. Mm. Um, so that's That's my first thought is like, man... I don't think Kyrie Irving's exactly making business decisions when he decides what to do with his basketball career, but I think he made a mistake because if he just finishes out the season um, and doesn't do anything else that gets him off the floor for an extended period of time, I think that's the best thing he could have done for his stock in free agency. Yeah, two things. This dude's clearly a cancer as a teammate. I mean, every team he's been on, I feel like he leaves it and the whole city hates him, not just the team, <laughs> but the entire city, the owners. They were booing him in Brooklyn before he even got traded. The current teams hate him. I, I think he's a cancer of a teammate. I'm worried. I love the Mavs. We can talk about what we think the Mavs are going to look like with Kyrie, but I think there's two things that he proves. One, he's a cancer of a teammate. Two, <laughs> this dude doesn't care about money in the slightest. Because if he did, he would have just been like, okay, I'm going to play basketball for the rest of the season. Maybe the Nets make a playoff push. Maybe they win a championship. Maybe he even gets a match with the Nets if they go win a ship. Exactly. You can yeah. get four years, what, 100, how much, what? How much, 160 million, whatever the max is for probably, four years? Probably, yeah. Can secure a bag. Probably more. You're playing yeah. with your best friend. W what are you doing? What this do you think that relationship looks like? Katie, now? Kyrie, yeah, now. Oh, it's got to be the most toxic relationship ever. I feel like yeah. KD is just like texting Kyrie every night, like, where are you at? <laughs> You come into my game tomorrow? <laughs> Kyrie's just like, maybe. I don't know. And then I feel like sometimes he, like, a couple weeks ago, he's probably like, oh, Kyrie, are you coming to my game tomorrow? And Kyrie's like, oh, yeah, I'll be there. KD wakes up, trade request. And KD's probably like, what the heck is going on? I, I feel bad for KD that he left a sure thing in Golden State just to enter the most toxic relationship of all time in Brooklyn. And uh, I hope this dude leaves Brooklyn. I feel bad for him. I hope he joins a contender and can uh, get over this this relationship. But nevertheless, I'm excited to see what happens in Dallas. I think it's going to be fun to watch. This offense is going to be incredible. Yeah, it's going to be a fun offense because you have... I mean, okay, wait, the first thing I want to say is I've seen kind of sports media go about this. Like, we were watching a little ESPN earlier today. And mm -hmm. it seems like there's so much talk about the basketball side of this, yeah. which makes sense because it was a, you know, a basketball trade. <laughs> He's a basketball but, player, yeah. But, like... Find somebody who's going to tell you that the Mavericks offense is going to be worse now that they have Kyrie Irving than it was before. Mm -hmm. Like, no one's going to say that. Like, this offense, if Kyrie Irving plays, there's going to be some fit issues. There's going to be some – it's going to be complicated. But at the end of the day, it's going to be a fantastic offense if Kyrie Irving plays. The, the biggest question about this is the off-court stuff. But mm. as far as, you know, the on-court stuff goes – this takes a huge weight off of Luka. I mean, we know year in, year out, he's mm -hmm. one of the most highly used offensive players in the NBA. Um, if he's on the floor, he's doing one of two things. He's initiating the offense or he's resting for a play <laughs> on the offense because <laughs> he is carrying the load. And Kyrie does a couple of things. One, you know, 
well, a, a few things. Luca, you would imagine Luca can play less minutes per game because you can afford to sit him because Kyrie can come in and be that elite offensive weapon in minutes where Luca's on the bench. Um, you know, obviously, obviously, you're going to have your place when Luca's on the floor where Kyrie can initiate the offense. Maybe we see Luca develop a little bit more as an off-ball player because we haven't really seen that yet in his career. Now, you know, the, the talent's there for him to do a little bit more of that. We'll see. Um, but the other thing is, like, I know we've talked about this a little bit, but um, when Luca does get double teamed, mm-hmm. you know, if, if they want to try to trap him off a pick and roll, if they want to try to send two defenders when he's on the post, um, on the elbow, um, you know, you get the ball into Kyrie's hands while the defense is in rotation or in a four on mm-hmm. or a, a four on three situation because a double team has been sent to Luca, mm-hmm. you know, at the top of the key. Kyrie's a guy that obviously can just tear that apart, either scoring for himself or creating for other people. So I think um, there's only one basketball. There's going to be issues where you put two guys that are so good on the ball together, you know, who gets to initiate the offense. I think there's going to be a little bit where you're seeing the limitations of the fact that there's just one basketball. But in a lot of ways, um, they're going to work well together and Kyrie's going to take a lot of the load off of Luka Doncic. I'm excited for, because it seems like, as Dom was saying, the doubles come to Luca. It seems like it's not just like every now and then. It's every single play that Luca brings the ball up. There's an immediate double team, a high pick and roll. Right. I'm excited for Kyrie to get these open look spot up threes. And then even these threes where he catches it on the wing, catches it at the top of the key. And now there's a, the decision to make an open three or to drive past like a wing or a forward or a, a center that's coming at him and he can make a layup or pass out. But I think after watching so many games, I think this team is going to be even faster now. Because I feel like Luka gets the ball. Yeah. And it takes him like 10 seconds to get up half the court. And by the time by the time he passes half court and the offense is set and ready to go, it's like at 16 seconds on the shot clock. I think at this point, just wherever the defense is done, have Kyrie bring the ball up, have Luka get the ball kind of at half court and maybe have like, two to three extra seconds of offense where Luka can make more decisions and make more plays. Yes, and then Kyrie kind of pushes the pace. Yeah, I, I mean, I really just like what can happen because Luka's so good at breaking down a defense, you know, getting the defense to collapse in on him because, like, he's just so good at scoring. If you don't send help, he's going to tear you apart. And, yeah, just the idea of, like, even if Luka does get to the paint, collapse the defense, the idea of Kyrie getting the ball while the defense is scrambling just and just – you know, him having the opportunity to just shred that apart. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be a lot of fun. It could be a lot of fun if if the chemistry works, if Kyrie can just play basketball. Um, it's going to be a really fun offense. Yeah, I'm fully prepared for this team to look great for the regular season and then the playoffs to start and Kyrie to be, like, gone. Like, in South America or something. <laughs> it, like, it feels like a ticking time bomb, doesn't it? It feels like... I could totally see this team going to, like, the conference semifinals, and everyone's warming up for the game, and there's, like, reports that Kyrie's in, like, Guatemala, like, Guatemala with, like, an ayahuasca guy. Like, I could just see anything happening. Um, but if he stays on the court and plays every game, I can't wait. And I think this team could win it. I, I do. I could win it. It's yeah. a good team. Their, uh, their odds went up. They were at 1,800. Now they're 1,400. I'm trying to throw some money down. I know you will be. Have you put money down yet? Not on the Mavs. I have money on okay. the Clippers. Because I do think if the Clippers stay healthy, with a healthy Kawhi, healthy PG, they're a deep team, uh, I think they can do it. I think Ty is a great coach. Always talks about the great in-game adjustments. Uh, I think the West is completely wide open. And I don't think yeah. I don't think the current one or two seeds, Memphis and Denver, I don't think they can get it done. I think they're great teams, but I just... I just don't think they have it in them. I think Memphis thinks they have it in them, but I don't think they do. Why don't you tell them what you think about Memphis? I think Memphis is the fakest team <laughs> in the NBA, and it's not even close. I think Jaw's really great. His dad really annoys me. How he just shows up every game with like with like a vodka soda, and he's sitting courtside. And he's like, hey, look at look at me. I I created this whole team. He's like, no, like your son's just a baller, so chill out and stop fighting with Shannon Sharp on the sidelines. Um, I don't know. I don't like their players. I think they think they're sick about this grit and grime. Grit and grind? My God. And I think 
they think they've already won the championship. They act like they've won multiple championships, and they haven't done anything yet. They haven't even gone to a conference finals yet. So I think they should just chill out, not be fighting with everyone 24-7 and thinking they're sick, and uh, play basketball and actually like, try to win games in the postseason, <laughs> which is the whole you know point of this. I think the fighting is great for the league, though. I do love the fight. It's so fun. It's so fun. I loved I loved the Mitchell Dylan Brooks fight. And I especially loved Donovan Mitchell's post game presser. Because mm-hmm. he did not mince words. He went Facts. right at him. Right at him. He was saying some shit like, uh, if you can't guard me, just say that. We'll, we'll get you a switch. <laughs> All kinds of stuff. He was at his throat. And um I was really surprised when the fight went down because obviously Dylan Brooks kind of swung and hit Mitchell in the groin area. And then Mitchell fucking threw him on the ground. Yeah. That was not what I was expecting to happen. Yeah. Mitchell's 6'1". Him. I can't believe he's only 6'1". I yeah. thought he was taller. But they yeah. say 6'1", and Dylan Brooks is 6'6". Threw yeah. that man down. Yeah, it's impressive. Yeah. As, speaking of this, I have an idea for the NBA. Okay. There's a shot clock. It's 24 seconds. Someone like Dylan Brooks hits you right in the schnoz. You should get 24 seconds just to have him fight. Hockey rules. Hockey rules. Give yeah. him 24 seconds. And then the, the, the shot clock goes off. You hear the buzzer. Everyone stops fighting. If you keep fighting, suspension. But I think if I think it would just be way more fun to see someone. He, he deserved to get hit. Dylan Brooks, if you yeah. punch someone right there, like a cheap shot right there, bam. Right. You deserve well, to get a scrap. And I think a lot what of the a lot of the fake tough guy stuff in the NBA goes away if there's a fight clock because like mm. you're not gonna get like I don't know if Austin Rivers steps up chest to chest with Mo Bamba if there's a fight clock like because you know if you're in the league and mm-hmm. you start talking shit and you get right up on someone you know that's getting broken up hundred percent it's getting broken up fast Austin Rivers was going at Mo Bamba immediately gets pulled back by Jalen Suggs right and then he like stops for a second as he's like. 20 feet away from him, he starts talking shit again. It's easy <laughs> talking shit from 20 feet away. It's easy talking shit from 30 feet away. When you're inches away from a 7 foot 5, 7 foot 1 dude, yeah, you're not going to talk shit. And uh, I don't know, Adam Silver, tune in. <laughs> You'll hear some great ideas. You're welcome. Who wins the Donovan Mitchell Dylan Brooks fight if it, goes, if it goes down? Dude, if you told me before I watched the fight, yeah. I would say easy favorite is... It's definitely Dylan Brooks. Dylan Brooks minus 500. Easy. Yeah. He's got five inches on him. He's got, what, 10, 20 pounds on him. But now after watching this, it might be a pick em. It might be a minus 110, minus 110. And if it is, I'm throwing all my money on Donovan Mitchell because really? I want to root against Dylan Brooks and I want to root against the Memphis Grizzlies. All right. That's just what I think, though. We need to install a shot fight clock which solve know. a lot of problems. Dylan Brooks looks like... He gives me wrestler energy. Like, yeah, Donovan Mitchell tossed him on the ground, mm. and uh, Mitchell was looking good in that fight. But for as much as I don't like Dylan Brooks and think he's a dirty player, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like I feel like he's got some low key wrestling skills to him. I can see it. <sighs> Maybe I don't know. I could see that. You know? I'd also love to see Stephen Adams fight someone. I don't think he will, dude. But I feel like he's got the strength and like that Aussie power. Where I feel like if when he was a kid, he like wrestled a shark or something. I feel like Jokic would be the scariest guy to get mad. Because 90% mm. of the time, he has that, like, I don't give a fuck demeanor. Ooh. But he's a big dude. If you may, like, I would not want to be in the room with Jokic when he's angry. You know what? I think, know? I think you're right. And I think if you lost, or I think if you beat Jokic, like you beat him up, I think his two brothers <laughs> from Serbia, wherever that dude's from, comes at you and you're done. Yeah, like you're, you're uh, gonna wake up in a cell in like Antarctica and you're done. You're Serbia. <laughs> I wouldn't. Miss I don't America. know. I don't know. But I'm excited. Um, Dom Philadelphia Seventy Sixers, your team. Mm-hmm. They're looking nice. They're looking good. James Harden looking like a true quarterback. Incredible on offense. Not really there on defense. Incredible passing. I don't think his defense is as bad as people say. It you is. don't think so? No. And part of that is because he has. He has the size to be somewhat versatile on defense, and he's mm. playing hard on the, on that end of the floor. I I do think I think um, there were some highlights in his Rocket days where, where where he looked like he didn't give a fuck, and I yeah. think people will remember that. But no, I, I um I don't I don't think he's as bad on defense as people give him credit for. 
Um, but yeah, that team's looking really good, especially Joel Embiid. Um, that dude's developed into a one-of-a-kind player. I mean, how many centers can score in all the ways he can score? You know, he can score with his back to the basket. He can score in the mid-range area. He can score from three. He can score off the dribble. He has an incredible face-up game where he kind of gets the ball on the elbow yeah. and puts down some fucking dribble moves and will take, like, those leaning jumpers or attack you off the dribble. And, like, a lot like a guard, really. Definitely. Um, and his passing has developed as well. He's averaging over 33 points a game this year. Um, his game's come a, a really long way. And That's, he's got the shot fake. The, yeah, the... the... <laughs> oh, come on. It's not and, then they, and then they bite every single time. Yeah. That's crazy he's averaging 30 points. But it also seems like everyone is scoring 30 points. Yeah, there's there's seven or eight dudes in the league. We counted yeah. this out <laughs> yesterday. Let's see if we can list them real quick. I'll pull it up. Okay, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to list all the dudes in the league averaging 30 plus because I saw Embiid averaging like 33 and a half or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and that seems nuts. But then you look through and there's clearly. I mean, there's been a huge outburst in 30 point scores this year. This year, at least it feels like. So I believe LeBron. Okay, wait, wait really? That's what yesterday seven. LeBron was. There's seven. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> LeBron, Tatum, mm -hmm. Embiid, mm -hmm. Shea, Shea mm -hmm. Gilgis Alexander. Yep. In OKC, he's a fun player to watch, yeah. by the way. Um, did I say Giannis already? No. Okay, Giannis, Giannis. Luca. Ooh, the seventh one's kind of hard. Yeah? Yeah. Well, he's great, obviously. Yeah, well, yeah. But we forget about him because the team he's on. For the sake of time, just let Dame Dalla. Oh, Damian. Oh, he's over 30 this year? Yeah, 30.9. Wow. KD's at 29.7. So mm. it could be easily eight people averaging 30. What are the odds Dame wins a ring in Portland? Zero. Zero. And his whole career. He, if he doesn't leave, he's not winning. Is that what you're saying? Here's the thing. I don't think free agents want to go to Portland. Yeah. I feel like they're going to go to other places. They're going to go to Boston. They're going to go to New York. Maybe not New York. They're going to go to, you know, L.A., uh, San Francisco. He's great. But why would you go to Portland? And I think they'd have to draft incredibly well. And I don't know if that organization is... Their front office is as great to just strictly build around Dame. And I also, full take, I don't think Dame could win a championship being a number one on a team. I always hesitate to say that just because of the state of where the league is now, where everything's so wide open. If, mm -hmm. if you put a good enough core around him, I think it could happen. Yeah. I always, I know we were talking about this, but I always go back to, to Dirk's ring mm -hmm. where like, you know. I got a question for you after this. Okay. Dirk's ring was cool because, first of all, if he doesn't get it, you think about that whole career completely differently. He's a lifelong Mav, mm -hmm. but he would have had zero championships. Yeah. Um, and he was like 34, I want to say. He's pretty old. The year he won, he was getting up there in age. And that was a team that didn't have another like superstar. And he went out and beat the Spurs. Um, the Lakers. The Lakers, the Thunder. And the Heat. And the Heat. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Did he play all four of those teams? Played all four of those teams. That's crazy. Took them all out. Those were really good teams. What back a savage. Then. Yeah. Um, so I would, I mean, I would, I'm not saying I think this is going to happen, but I would love to see Dame get one like that where the supporting cast is solid. Everyone shows up and plays well. Dame goes ballistic in the playoffs. He just squeezes mm -hmm. out one ring for Portland, you know, because otherwise there's going to be like, there will always be that conversation of, damn, like, Damian Lillard was really good, but he never he never won. You it's know? just tough. I, don't, I just don't see it in the near-term future. Right. And then after the near-term future, it's like you, you consider his age and his health, and it's like... How much, how, how much, how much time much... does he have to do this? Exactly. Right. And I think... Oh, here's the question. Okay. You put Damian Lillard on last year's Golden State Warriors team instead of Steph Curry. Ooh. Do they win the championship? I think that's a tough question. I'm going to say no. You don't think so? And the biggest the biggest reason for that is I feel like Steph is a really unique player in what he does off the ball. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the Warriors' offense flows off of that, flows off of, like, Draymond handling the action or somebody else handling the action while Steph's running around screens and relocating. And he's just like, 
He's a guy that thrives and takes up a ton of the defense's attention, whether or not he has the basketball, in a way that I'm not sure if there's anyone else in the league. I, I, I'm 100% sure there's no one else in the league who is like that, like Steph is. And I think the whole Warriors offense is built around that skill set. So I, I don't think... Um, he wins that ring. I don't, I don't think he win that ring. And just the chemistry that Draymond and Steph have, um, you know... We, we didn't see it as much in the finals where Draymond was really struggling on offense, but generally a lot of that offense comes from the chemistry those two have together. So no, I don't I don't think you can just replace Steph, especially just just because of the way that team is built around him. Yeah. And what he does. So speaking of the Trailblazers. Yeah. Trailblazers fans are crazy right now. They're trying to get KD over in Portland. <laughs> but there's rumors about KD requesting a trade saying, I want to get out of here. Maybe going to Phoenix, <laughs> maybe going to OKC. There's a lot of rumors being floated out there. Ooh, OKC, okay, huh? They got a lot. They mm. could do it. They got the picks to do it. Young Kevin core. Shea. Ooh, okay. Next year, Chet. Okay. I don't know. Do you think he's gonna get traded? Do you think he should request a trade, or do you think he will request a trade? What do you think is going on with KD? Um. So I feel like he's not gonna Kyrie in the sense that he's not gonna refuse to play. Mm. Yeah, he's not that guy. He's I think if, yeah, I think if Katie's on the roster and he's getting paid, he's going to go out and play, mm-hmm. um, which I can respect. Should he request a trade? I don't I mean, I, I think that the Nets have what it takes to, to tool up and build a contender around him still. This year, though, not this year. I don't. I don't think they're there this year. Dude, the clock is ticking. He is thirty-four. Career. He's thirty-four. If I'm here, I am gone. Yeah, I'm you're in a trade without a doubt. I guess this this whole give me the hell out of that here. whole or the, the whole thing has been a disaster. But it's yeah. his fault. Like these are the guys he wanted to play with. He wanted to play with James Harden and Kyrie Irving. That's why he went to Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, and it's been a disaster. But you know, that seems like the result of his own decision making. Um. I would love to see him get traded to Portland. That would be a lot of fun. I would love to see him get traded anywhere. I think, because I think when Kyrie was on this team, they could have they could have gone to the finals. Yeah. They could have. I they think got there was hot for a second. Yeah, there was four yeah. teams that could have gone to the finals. It could have been them, the Bucks, Boston, and Philly. I think those were like the real four contenders. On the bubble, there's maybe like Miami. I don't know. I don't think they have it right now. They're too injury prone. I think it's tough to win with. Jimmy as your main scoring guy. Um, but they had a chance. And I think if you're KD, it's like, I think I'm not winning the title with Spencer Dinwiddie as my two and Ben Simmons on my team, who's like <laughs> scared to shoot the ball. I think you got to leave. It's wild how fast that team went from like, well, honestly, early in the season, they kind of looked dead in the water. Like they weren't. Yeah, they Steve weren't. Got fired, man. They weren't at that championship level, and then all of a sudden they got red hot with Kyrie and KD playing together again, and all of a sudden they kind of came up like, "Ooh, this is that's a legit contender." Mm-hmm. And then on a dime, Kyrie requests a trade, gets shipped out. What twenty four, forty eight hours later? Yeah, and all of a sudden they're kind of like, "Okay, this isn't a contender again," and it's just it's it's been a hell of a roller coaster, and I feel like that. I mean, that summarizes the entirety of the last. Really, as long as I can remember from yeah. the Nats, it's been a roller coaster, but with a lot more downs than ups. I thought um, they were going to be a dynasty. Are you? Yeah. Are you buying the story that Joe Ty, the owner of the Nets, receives the trade request mm-hmm. and intentionally doesn't send him to LA because that's where Kyrie wanted to go? <laughs> Do you think that's true? Um, I, I think that's true. I could see it, man. I would not be anxious to do Kyrie any favors right? if I were a member of the Nets organization. That's all I'll say. Mm-hmm. I would, dude. Yeah. I would have sent him to, back to Cleveland or something. Dude, no. I would, <laughs> if I was him, I would have sent him to the Shanghai Sharks. I don't care. I would have been like, you want to go to L.A.? No, you're not going to L.A. You're going to China. You're going to, you know, Russia. I don't care. You're gone. I'm not. After you, all the headaches that guy caused. Yeah. The entire organization. <laughs> it was a disaster. Probably tenure. took, like, years off. Size life, <laughs> and Steve Nash probably like goes to sleep thinking he's still coaching that team, and that's nightmares. Bro, like, Steve Nash, Steve Nash might have a coaching career right now if it weren't for Kyrie. I think Nash is probably done. 
Can you imagine, like... I don't know if Nash won. I think, like, Nash might be scarred. He might never watch another basketball game, man. Yeah. I'd be yeah. like, honestly, like, fuck this whole league. I'm, <laughs> I'm just gonna play soccer, man. <laughs> it's pretty good. He should go, honestly, just, like... Go pro in soccer. Yeah, go coach the MLS and win a ship. Just shove it in everyone's faces. Yeah. Yeah, I am a good coach. I don't know. I think it could be true. I feel like... I hope so. I like yeah. that one. Because it sounds like the package was two first-rounders, the 27 and 29. Yeah. Russell... Russell for, Westbrook. Russell Westbrook. Yeah. For Kyrie. Right. Mm. And the Mavs gave up Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian mm. Finney-Smith, a first and two seconds. Yeah, I mean, the one thing I could say is that Dorian Finney-Smith is a pretty solid 3 and D type player. Really good corner three-point shooter. Um, mm. So he's a win now type of piece. Uh, and then... Spencer Dinwiddie is good in his role. Like, he is a good scorer. He can create some offense. He was averaging, like, 17 points a game in Dallas on pretty solid efficiency before he got traded. So, Mm -hmm. um, in the case of the trade they did end up making with the Nets, I don't see Russell Westbrook as a win-now piece, necessarily. Anyway. I just don't think think he fits. He just doesn't really fit into a, a starting offense. You know what I mean? Because... Because of the issues with spacing, because of some of the bad decisions he makes on the floor, I think um, the guys they got are much better fits if you want to win right now, if you want to put together the best possible lineup for the last six minutes of a game. Um, and look, if they're going to keep KD, they have to be trying their best to be a contender. Mm-hmm. You know, If they trade KD, it's a different story. You probably just want as many draft assets as possible, as many young players as possible. But... You know, if you're going to bring this core with Nick, Nick Claxton, Joe yeah. Harris, Seth Curry, Kevin Durant, like there's some there's some really quality players there right now. If you want to try to win right now, they got two win now pieces who aren't Kyrie Irving but are solid players in their own right, plus a couple of picks um, to get them out. So I think there's a there's a basketball argument to be made, but I I think the idea that he just did it to stick it to to Kyrie is a fun one. You know, you know, you know, a question like should be asked right now sure. is why did Kyrie even request this trade? Like he went to a worse team. I love Luca. I love the Mavs. Yeah. He's in a worse situation. Like that's a great core. KD, Claxton, Seth Curry, Joe Harris. Like that's great. And you got Patty Mills. Like that's a good team. Now you're going to a team with like Luca. Okay, great. Christian Wood's good. Then you got Dwight Powell, like Reggie Bullock. Um, Tim Hardaway Jr., like, why would you leave a team that is a better team to go to a worse team? You, I feel like you don't see that. I feel like you see, like, James Harden on, like, a terrible Rockets team being like, yeah, let me get to a contender. Yeah. Did, did he really just, did he hate the city of New York? Did he hate the ownership? Did he hate the front office? Or was he just, like, ready to move on? I don't know, man. It really came out of left field. It was, um, I, I believe it was based off contract stuff that basically they said, we're not going to give you a max in the off season. Mm-hmm. And they said, okay, well then I'm gone. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, like I said at the, at the beginning of this, I think the best thing he could have done for, for himself is just prove that he could be unproblematic and, and show his elite level talent and then go for a deal when he hits free agency. Yeah. You know? So I wonder, I just want to see like, I would love to have a GoPro attached to Kyrie Irving and just see him, just, like, wake up and be like, you know, should I – what's, like, the weirdest thing I could do today? And just, right, like, right. see him go through the process of making such weird decisions. I don't know. I think it would be a fun, like, the Kyrie Irving reality show. Yeah, he needs a, he needs a reality show. Dude, imagine sure. the ratings on that show. It would be yeah. incredible. Just, like, going inside the mind of that guy. Just being, like, day-to-day, be like – Oh, he wakes up, he, all right, he did, like, some yoga, and now he's, like, looking at himself in the mirror, and then he's just doing crazy stuff. I don't know. Like, I just, like, what does he do all day? I don't know. But I can't wait. I can't wait for this game on Wednesday. Yeah, that's the first one. Mavs Clippers. Yep. It seems like everyone's going to be healthy. It seems like Luka's heel is going to be healed up. Right. They're making it seem like Kyrie's playing. And then they're playing against CP3, or they're playing against PG-13 <laughs> and Kawhi. Who do you think is winning that game? <laughs> if everyone One plays game? right now yeah who's winning this game Mavs I'll say Mavs, Mavs. This... yeah I think Kyrie plays well I'll bet he plays 31 minutes and drops 28 points in his first game with the Mavs I was gonna give you an over or under of 23 points over wow mm-hmm. damn bold gets that, that bold. gets that many minutes though I feel like every now and then a guy joins the team on Monday 
gets one practice in on Tuesday, gets 31 minutes. Yeah. Damn. Okay. I mean, that all, I, yeah, I, I think, I think, uh, I think he can hold it down. Yeah. It's a good player. So now, Kyrie's on the Mavs. Mm. LeBron is very butthurt. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't he, interview. He, to explain, to exclaim how butthurt he is. His first tweet was, maybe it's me after they're getting <laughs> trade for him. Dude, Kyrie, this dude, like, must be magical. The amount of men, like, fawning over this guy not just men but like Kyrie or KD LeBron like just fawning over this man and he's just like doesn't care at all and he's like I'm gonna go play with Luca like they must be like oh my god like he's leaving me for the younger girl like that's how it look that's how it looks KD's like oh my god he's gonna leave me for LeBron well like, well he, le- he left LeBron so he had to work on himself and be single <laughs> <laughs> Go be independent. Go be independent. And then he was like, gonna be his own woman. Yeah, and then he was he was independent for a bit. He's like, I'm gonna go back to being a dependent and hang out with KD. <laughs> Do you think LeBron is more butthurt that Kyrie is playing for the Mavs, or that his organization just didn't do enough to get it done? Oh, I think he's upset that the organization didn't do enough. I think. Um, see, here's the thing with the Lakers. The way I see it is, they've given up a lot of picks over the course of these last handful of years to bring this core together of Westbrook, Anthony Davis, and LeBron. And they do have one ring to show for this LeBron era. And Mickey Mouse ring, but yes. Mickey Mouse ring, yeah. Um, You know that that's a wild ring when, like, the highest... Okay, I I might butcher this. I'm going to do my best not to butcher this. The highest scoring counterparts in a playoff series Mm -hmm. of all time. I could be wrong about this. I would love a fact check. But I believe it was Donovan Mitchell and Jamal Murray in the bubble when they were both just putting 45 pieces up on each other every night. Jeez. They were going crazy in that series. That was was nuts. And I, I, I do wonder how much, like, just not having any distractions in the crowd and stuff while you're shooting made a difference because, like, at least in that series... That was the best series of the bubble, by the way. Those dudes went ballistic. That was the best game of the bubble. The first game. Yeah. I, yeah. I watched the first game. I was like, in the pandemic, nothing's going on. I was like, this is going to be incredible. I'm going to watch games all day, and they're going to be this great. Yeah. It's I'm a wild time. TJ Warren TJ lost Warren's his mind. On. Jimmy Butler lost his Jimmy mind. Jimmy Butler lost his mind. That was incredible to watch. Damn, Jimmy Butler. That was fun. Um, yeah, but I think the Lakers front office has been hesitant to trade those last two first-round picks um, because... God, their future when LeBron leaves LA is looking bleak. And honestly, right now that team is pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Um, So they're in a really tough spot. And I think, um, I don't know what was or wasn't offered, but I think LeBron's upset that they haven't brought in more support yet. And I don't don't think it has much to do with where Kyrie landed as much as it's just like, he saw this glimmer of hope (laughs) that Kyrie was going to come in. Yeah, and save the day. And it didn't happen. (laughs) And um, honestly, I, I think LeBron just likes being the center of attention. Yeah. I think, uh, and I think, um, as much as anyone else, him and Aaron Rodgers have this thing where they always, they always got to blame other people when they're not winning. And in LeBron's case right now, like, okay, yeah, he is one of the five best players in the league right now. So it's not his fault. The Lakers aren't good, but he's very quick to throw teammates under the bus. Um, it's hard for me to feel bad for him at all. I don't feel bad. Like, he, he does this press conference today. or this No, not a press conference. A interview. one-on-one interview yeah. with Michael Wilbon. Saying, like, oh, my, I, I wish they did more. I'm disappointed that we don't have yeah. him. Dude, you know why they don't have him? Because they traded, like, seven pieces for Russell Westbrook. And they have a terrible contract. And right. they have no picks. Right. Who signed... Do you think... Don't you think the Lakers have been like, hey, do you want Russell Westbrook? And he said yes. He could have said no. Anyone right. with Anyone with, like, a great concept of what a team should look like would have been, like... This is terrible for our team. We need someone to space the floor, and right. this guy's going to do the exact opposite. So it's kind of like the reason you're not getting these people is because you have one of the worst contracts in the NBA. Right. You gave up all of your young talent for this right. guy that doesn't fit the team. And so now that he doesn't fit the team, he looks way worse. And so his value just keeps diminishing and diminishing. And it's like, I kind of don't feel bad because you are the GM in a way. Like, yeah, I don't know. It just feels like – it feels weird because – In kind of that Westbrook transition, they lost Contavious Caldwell-Pope, Danny Green, Alex Caruso, Mm -hmm. Kyle Kuzma. With the exception of Kuzma, those are all 
very high IQ guys on both ends of the floor, especially Caruso is one of the better perimeter defenders in the league. Danny Green is a pretty solid perimeter defender as well. Mm-hmm. You lose a lot of shooting there. And all of that's kind of in this transition to Russell Westbrook. I think some of them were lost in free agency because of contracts and some of them were actually traded in the trade to get Russell Westbrook. Um, point I'm getting at is it seems like the Lakers have been okay with not surrounding LeBron with shooting. And they've really doubled down on that going into this year. Mm-hmm. And it's just weird because they don't have they don't have a lot of good defensive pieces and they don't have a lot of good shooters. And it's just like the the roster construction around LeBron is so strange, you know? Yeah. Um, they just have AD who's constantly hurt. Yeah, great. I mean, obviously an amazing yeah. player. And, mm-hmm. and a, a great fit with LeBron being a guy that can come off the pick and roll and do a lot of damage. But he hasn't stayed healthy. And then the rest of the core is like... You know, I was watching, you have a lineup of Patrick Beverly, LeBron James, Russell Westbrook, Anthony Davis, and who was on the floor? Um, you got Austin Reeves out there. You got a... Uh, and this is a specific lineup. I don't remember... Uh, Wayne uh, Gabriel. Oh, and, and, and Dennis Schroeder. And Dennis Schroeder's other guy on the floor. And it's like a small ball lineup without shooting. Like, you know what I mean? Like, nobody... Nobody needs to get stuck out of the three-point arc. There's no driving lanes because no one's commanding that defensive attention. And then on the other end of the floor, it's not a great defensive lineup either. And it's just like, Mm -hmm. what's going on? Like, that's one of the best lineups the Lakers can put together. And it's not very inspiring, you know? They're tough to watch. I mean, it's incredible when LeBron's going off. But it's like, I, I was watching highlights of anthony davis the other day when he was like peak new orleans and he plays completely differently yeah like he plays if you watch the lakers games he's like kind of on the wing to even on the three-point arc due to new orleans like if there was a missed shot that dude was flying in and just yamming on people constant alley-oops constantly just playing above the rim and i feel like you just don't see that as much anymore he doesn't have those hops and i feel like he plays like he's scared to get injured because he's like I mean, if I get injured, I'm going to get some shit talk. To be fair, he's been incredible when healthy this year. Yeah. But he's doesn't he really play good. differently, though, you think? Um, yeah, he probably is a little bit more out on the perimeter. Mm-hmm. but He was playing great. He was playing, he's been playing really good this year when healthy. Mm-hmm. That's just been the big thing. It's like, he's missed a lot of time this year. So do you think, as currently constructed, say they make the playing game, 7-8, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. any chance of an upset? LeBron's playing great. AD's playing great. Pat Bev's talking shit. Hurting people. <laughs> Russell Westbrook's doing mediocre, which is good, for the second unit. They gotta trade him, man. You think he has, they have to trade him? Um, In order to, like... Because I feel like right there, if you have LeBron and AD playing at a great... If they're playing great, yeah, you feel like they can always make a run. Yeah, I, I think... You have a point. If LeBron and AD are both at the top of their game, it's hard to say no, the Lakers can't go on a run and surprise some people. But I think this team needs more shooting. I think they need more high IQ type veterans to step in and mm-hmm. and just play quality basketball both ends of the floor. I I just I can't see this team winning as currently constructed, even if they do get healthy and stay healthy. But I mean, like you said, LeBron and AD on the floor, you never know what's gonna happen. What are the odds Westbrook gets traded? 40%. That low? Yeah, just because, I no mean, wants him? nobody nobody wants him, mm-hmm. you know? I think um, he's clearly a negative asset right now, right? Exactly. You got to pay him the equivalent of $45 million for the rest of this season and all of next season. Um, clearly, he's not worth that. Clearly, he's also a guy that probably should be playing 25 minutes or less a game, should not be in your lineup in the last four minutes if you're trying to genuinely be competitive. Um, Mm -hmm. And I don't think he's really... He's been good about being in the second unit this year, Mm -hmm. but I don't think he's ready to fully accept that type of role. So, I mean, he's definitely a negative asset. So, I mean, you're already looking at, like, you have to give something up to get someone to take Westbrook. Um, then the question is, will you give up Westbrook something and something else to, to match salaries and go and get a really good player back? I've, um, got, a, I've got a trade for you. All right, let's hear it. Russell Westbrook. Mm-hmm. I think I know first, going. 2027 uh-huh. first. Mm-hmm. For Kyle Lowry and Max Struess, who says no? Because 
because that's being floated around right now. Because it seems like Miami wants to get rid of Kyle Lowry, and they're willing to pair Strauss to do it, Strauss to do it. I I think the Heat say no to that. They say no to that. Yeah. But um, what can they even get for Kyle Lowry then? I mean Russell Westbrook. Because I feel like he's in the same category as Westbrook. No, because Lowry can still <laughs> shoot the ball, and I think Lowry is more of a guy that's gonna play. In a role that matches his skill set. He's not going to try to do too much. He's not going to make really bad decisions down the stretch. He's not going to completely clog lanes because, I mean, let's, like, I was watching a breakdown on the Lakers last night and, like, there's a lot of plays where the team will literally put their center on Westbrook and let him take the ball up the court and they'll be hanging out by the free throw line begging him to shoot the three. If he doesn't shoot the three, they go and get, you know, match up with him on the drive, meet him around the rim. And then if he passes the ball off, you have a free safety roaming around the paint, just helping. Like he's he's you he's a guy that can really disrupt your own offense if you put him on the floor with other starters. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I just don't think I just don't see I don't think he fits playing with a competitive lineup. Like I don't think you want Jimmy Butler, Bam, and kind of like the the A lineup for the Heat, and then throw Russell Westbrook in there. I don't. I don't think that's something they'd want to do. And I, I think where Westbrook belongs is probably. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what would stop a team from trying to negotiate a buyout with him, mm-hmm. um, if they were to with trade Westbrook? for him. Yeah. Yeah, because I think the Heat are in a in a stage where they could actually win. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think now's the time to trade for Westbrook for them. Yeah. I just don't. I just don't see Westbrook as a guy that's going to help a team win right now, and that's harsh. But is there a chance they could buy him out? I have no idea. Honestly, I'm not sure. Because I know there's a couple players on the buyout market. It sounds like Kevin Love's kind of there. Him, yeah. and, him and John Wall yeah. are, are entering the buyout market if they mm-hmm. don't get traded. Mm-hmm. If you're the Lakers, would you go for a John Wall or a Kevin Love? Get even older? <laughs> get even embrace, older. Embrace the age? Embrace the, uh, the wisdom? Man, I I haven't I can't say I've seen Kevin Love play a lot in the last couple of years. Yeah, but um, regenerated. That's what he is. He can shoot. I mean, that's yeah. that's a lot for that Laker team. He would really struggle on defense, but you know, put him out there for twenty minutes a game, fifteen minutes a game, let him stretch the floor. I mm. I don't see why you wouldn't take a shot. John Wall, mm, I don't quite see it. I mean, he could push the pace though, at least for the Lakers. Yeah, I mean, a backup point guard. Yeah. He could be in that mix. Get rid of Pat Bev. Why is Pat Bev plain? I don't... He's a best shooter. <laughs> no, he's, not their, shooter. He's, not, he's not their best shooter. <laughs> he is tough to watch. Like, yeah. him, and, him and Westbrook... He has um, a very limited offensive game, to say the least. It's so tough to watch. Yeah. And, like, there's times where it's like, oh, this guy is clearly not doing good. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. They've got too many problems. Yeah, no, they they have a long way to go to make that a competitive team. I don't think it's happening this year. It could. Anytime you have LeBron and AD, it could happen, but I don't see it. Yeah. they. Do you see that people are calling about AD? No. People are calling about AD? I don't think they're trading There's, him. There is trade rumors. Lakers, Bulls. Mm. AD for, like, DeMar, Zach Levine. And, like, maybe, uh, maybe Caruso thrown in there. That feels like a 2K trade. I don't think that's happening. You don't think so? No, I feel I like don't. both teams could say yes to that, though. I don't see it. You don't see it at all? It just feels like it feels like too much movement. Like I, I feel like that might what be are, good, What though. would the Bulls be accomplishing there? Get AD, bring him back home. Maybe just be like, rest of the season, put him on ice. And then <laughs> build, just, just don't play a game. <laughs> just like work out. Do he, might, he might do that all on his own. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Put himself on ice. Yeah, and then just work out. And then you get rid of all these other contracts. You get AD, mm-hmm. and then maybe like try to build something with AD. Because I can't... don't know, I don't know if, if if you're looking at that team that's getting older and the clearly Lakers? no the the Bulls. Oh. I don't know if you're looking at that team and they're saying we need a different aging star with an with an injury history to build around. How old is Anthony Davis? Twenty eight. Uh, I was thinking like 29, 30 maybe. Yeah, probably like twenty nine, thirty. Yeah. I mean, Just get a fact check on that. I don't know. Why not? You know? He's 29. 29. Why not get rid of all these guys? Get a star. I mean, I see... I think I think they should like a... tear down what they currently have. I just don't know if AD makes sense. But who else could they get? 
I think you want to get younger, get picks, get younger. I know, but okay. They got, I just I don't see it. I don't see it from either side. I think the Lakers. You don't for think better the Lakers worse, would do it? If I don't they, think they're trading AD. If the right Bulls, now. if the Bulls were like Demar, Zach Levine, Caruso, we get AD. I think they hundred percent take that deal. You don't think so? That'd be a team, bro. That would be a good team. That'd be fun. No, okay. I don't see why that's a bad trade. You don't give up any picks. The Bulls get Bulls get rid of these guys. They like put them on ice and have like a three to four year stretch where they just go all in with AD, the hometown AD. hero. Then maybe because they're not winning with Demar, they're maybe. not winning with Zach Levine. Yeah, they're not winning with Vucevic. Get Vucevic out of there. Yeah, get Vucevic out. Ao is not bad, and they got P Will, who I think is going to be good. I don't know. Maybe. I think, and then maybe Lonzo like will actually play basketball again. I think it could be like cool. There's a report out of this camp that both. Lonzo, Lonzo's agent, and the team doctors all don't know why he still has knee pain, which is never, <laughs> that's never a good thing. At first, you're like, his agent and his team, I was like, okay, maybe, maybe, and then you said the doctors, I was like, oh, well. Yeah, it's no, nothing good here. Yeah, that's, dude, because he, those first couple of games in Chicago, I was like, oh, it's going to be a really fun team to watch. Like, he's really, like, they deed up, they played pretty good on offense, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. this is going to be good, actually, and then, never seen that dude again. I don't. I'm like. I'm worried that dude's like not gonna play another game. You know. Yeah, it's never good when you have a knee injury and you can't figure out what it is. Yeah. That's, um, then you're entering. You're entering a Markel Fultz territory, and that's true. That's a bad territory it's to true. be. I, I don't even know. Is he in Orlando still? Yeah. Oh man, what a sad career. Yeah, that's a tough one. Wait, was he the one pick in that one? He was number one overall. Wow. It's pretty amazing. The Sixers are as good as they are when they got. Three Jeez. number one picks, and they got Simmons and Markel Fultz with two of them. Jeez. Yeah. Dude, that pick, so that draft was Markel, Alonzo, Jason Tatum. Yep. <sighs> Imagine if the Sixers took Tatum. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. I think you'd have, you'd have, you'd have won. Or the Lakers, dog. Or the Lakers. Who knows where the Lakers would be if they drafted Tatum? Would they have even gotten <laughs> LeBron? So LeBron signed the next year. He signed yeah. year two with Lonzo. Right. I think I think LeBron was always dead set on going to the Lakers. It might have been Tatum and LeBron. Wow. Yeah. Dude, imagine you remember the lottery pick where um the Lakers got the four pick. And then it was the year uh Zion was the number one pick. Mm-hmm. Imagine if the Lakers got the one pick and it was LeBron and Zion. That'd be insane. Well Zion, know that be? Zion hasn't even he's barely played. But when he has played, he's been so insane, good. He's, he's been so good. He's playing like 30 games a year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at first I thought this Pelicans team was going to make a deep run in the playoffs this year. Especially after watching them last postseason. They really took it to the yeah. Suns. Oh, it's but, true. But, yeah, they have tanked with no Zion. Well, NBI was hurt, too. NBI was hurt. Yeah. I mean, uh, Jose Alvarado can carry that squad. Jose Alvarado and CJ McCollum. No, it's tough when, like, arguably your two best players are hurt. <laughs> Not... Yeah. Yeah. My God. Zion and LeBron, that could have been gnarly. Damn, what could have happened? I hope Lonzo plays again. I really, I think I like him. I feel bad for him. Not yeah. just because of his knee, but I feel like his dad really just, the all the hype that he like made up about him before he came in was tough. I don't know how you overcome that. Jeez. Well, hey, LaMelo's playing pretty well. LaMelo is playing pretty well. Dude's a savage. Mm-hmm. All right. So. Before we go, Dom, mm-hmm. gonna play a little game. Okay. Right now, in the East, the top four teams: mm-hmm. Boston, Milwaukee, Seventy Sixers, Nets. Mm-hmm. No, let's go with the first three: Boston, Milwaukee, Seventy Sixers. Mm-hmm. End of the season, what do you think that those three are looking like, seeding wise? One, two, three. Sixers, Celtics, Bucks. Sixers with the one seed. Mm-hmm. Celtics with the two, and Bucks with the three. Mm-hmm. All right. Four, five, six is currently Nets, Cavs, Heat. How do you think that pans out? I could easily see the, the Nets dropping, especially KD. I think the Nets are going to drop. Yeah. Cleveland can go to the four, Miami. It depends a lot on what happens with KD. Yeah. Um, Say KD stays. I, I think the Heat are going to make a run, um, especially now that Butler's helping. He, I think he's missed like 15 or 20 games this year. Mm. I think uh, Miami finishes as the best of them. I think... KD ends up staying in Brooklyn, Brooklyn next, and then Cavs in the sixth spot. Cavs in the sixth spot? Cavs? Mm-hmm. Best rated defensive team? 
That's true. You don't think they could overtake the Nets? I think they could. I mean, the Cavs are, no are a very good team. Okay. Seven, eight, nine. Knicks, Hawks, Bulls. Mm. I think that's pretty fair. Do you think? Do you think any of the, there will be a shakeup here? I don't no, see. I'll say that. Stay, I'll say that. Hold Knicks, Hawks, Bulls. And you think? Okay, in the ten spot. I think the Raptors are fire selling everyone. Yeah, OG Ananobi and Pascal Siakam are both available. And Fred Van Fleet. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's on the block too. Mm. So I could see them just being like giving up. And at the twelve seed, I feel like if you have assets, maybe you should. So you yeah, think, definitely. I could see the Pacers climbing under the ten seed easily, especially with Tyrese mm-hmm. kicking the Wizards out. I'm surprised they're not better. Tyrese Halliburton is legit. Tyrese Halliburton is legit. He's also really good. All star. Yeah. yeah, deservingly so. What is going on with Bradley Beal? Is he just wasting away, <laughs> like, hanging out by himself? I think he likes putting up his 25 points a game and playing no defense. And getting the bag. And getting the bag. Hard to blame him. He's got to live in Washington. All right. In the West, current... This is where I think there can be a massive shakeup. The current three, current top three, Denver, Memphis, Sacramento. Yeah, and then after that, Clippers, Suns, Mavericks... They're only se- – I mean, the the three through six seeds are only separated by two games. Yeah. Um, and the seven seed. Oh, wow. And the, yeah, the, wow, the Timberwolves. And the ten. Dude, the ten seed is one game behind the six seed. There, are, there is, is a n- four-game swing between the 12 seed and the three seed in the West. Four games. <sighs> Holy shit. That is nuts. The end of the West is wide open. Dude, that's why you look at this. You're like, maybe the Lakers can make a run. You know? I mean, they could definitely make the playoffs, but I don't know, man. Yeah. I mean, they should have won Boston. You could easily win a couple more games. I think... Okay. You think you think the N- the Nuggets end with the one seed? They're looking pretty good. Four yeah, and a half. I, I, do think, I, think the, I think the Nuggets are the clear favorite for the one. Memphis is looking pretty nice in the two spot. Four and a half back. But they're two and a half. I could see of, them losing it, but yeah, I think... Um, I think I see this. Here, here's here's the order I'll put it in. I think Nuggets and Grizzlies stay. Mavericks get the three. Ooh. Oh, what are the Clippers? Phoenix and Clippers are close. I'll say Phoenix jumps to clip. Mm. I'm going to put the Clippers in the five right now. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to roll with this. Denver, Memphis. They stay one and two. Mavericks three. Phoenix four. Clippers five. Kings six. Golden State 7, Timberwolves 8. Okay. I'm going, same with you, Nuggets Memphis. Mm -hmm. Three Clippers. Four Mavs. Five Suns. Six Warriors. Seven Kings. Eight Pelicans. Mm. No Memphis, no Minnesota. That's fair. No Minnesota. That's very fair. Yeah, that's mine. Yeah, I don't think Minnesota makes the playoffs. I think they make the play-in game and lose to the Pelicans. Mm-hmm. Or, or it's a good call. If the yeah. Pelicans can get healthy, I think they're a better team for sure. Yeah, I don't know. I just I don't like what Minnesota's done, especially with Rudy. Mm-hmm. I think Utah fleeced them. Yeah, they gave up a lot for it was a fleecing. Yeah, yeah. For I mean, for a dude, Rudy's a really good rim defender. Yeah. But that's about all he does really well. You know, mm-hmm. in pick and roll, he can't come up and guard the perimeter. He doesn't really have much of an offensive game. Like, he's a pretty one-dimensional dude. And his one dimension is kind of something that, that can be exploited. For as good as he is at protecting the rim, his limitations on defense can be exploited. Mm-hmm. Um, and they gave, they gave up four, what, three first-round picks, a pick swap, and assets yeah. for the opportunity to get to pay Rudy Gobert max. I don't see it. Jeez. I didn't see that trade from the start. I don't uh, think. I don't think that's a great team. It's tough because I love Anthony Edwards. I love that dude. Yeah, he's like a he, sick dude. He's got a. He's an incredible mentality. His dog's name is Anthony Edwards. What a savage move. I think he's sick. I'm s- still not sold on Carl Anthony Towns. I think he's a great regular season player. But as you saw last year, it seems like he gets in these moments and just starts fouling, hmm. and like can't stay in the game, and he just. I don't know, I just don't think he has the mentality in him to win like that. Also, I hate the pairing of having, like, a slashing guard like Anthony Edwards who thrives around the rim, and then to to pair him 
with a dude who's very limited on offense who provides zero spacing. Yeah. I hate that mix. Terrible. I hate that combination, especially when you can be rolling with a guy like Carl Anthony Towns who really stretches the floor. I think, um, you know, if you're building this team around Anthony Edwards, which I imagine is where you're at if you're Minnesota, you want to give him as many driving lanes as possible mm-hmm. um, to just let him shine. And, yeah, I, I don't see it. I don't see it with Rudy Gobert. I feel like it's a league where the only center, like, centers don't make sense anymore. Unless you're Joel or Jokic. I think, and I think, um, I think part of it is just that the offenses have gotten so complicated that, like, I think versatility is more valuable than ever on both ends of the floor. Mm-hmm. Like, guys who can do a lot of things well. Um, because, like, teams will scheme to try to pull Rudy Gobert out to the perimeter or, like, make make Minnesota pay for the fact that Rudy Gobert can't pay, can't defend the perimeter. <laughs> can't speak. Um, you speak in French. You heard Rudy yeah, Gobert and you're like, nice. just start going to that language. Anyway, anyway yeah. I don't see it. All right. Dom, it's, it's February 6th. Mm-hmm. To end it. Calling it right now. Okay. Finals matchup. Who's coming out of the East? Who's coming out of the West? Sixers. Nuggets. Clippers. Bucks. No one said this. I'm surprised neither of us said the Celtics. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're definitely the favorite right now. Yeah. It's too easy. It's too easy to pick the favorite. Too easy. If you pick the Nuggets, they are the one seed. Are they the, are who they the best favorite? Who do you think's the favorite coming out of the West? I think it's the Nuggets. You think so? Yeah, just because they have such a big lead in the standings. 